there are some important stakes on the table here with grade level reading that we really need to pay attention to. There's many who would assume that this is a problem of poverty, this is a problem of minority, this is a problem of disadvantage. And yes, it is. But more and more in this country, not reading proficiently is a universal problem. Some 54 to 55 percent of non-poor children in this country do not read at or above grade level by the end of third grade. A similar percentage of white children do not read at or above grade level by the end of third grade. We have a national crisis. Economics does not equal vocabulary and never should be. But in this study, one of the almost unconscionable things that we discovered was that children who come from welfare families on average, on average, hear 32 million less instances of words. This is not to be, it, we, it cannot go on like this in a, in a country like ours. Every parent should know that one of the most important things they do is give them words. Reading begins as soon as a child is born. If, if we want to look at the whole developmental process of becoming a reader, we can't ignore the very first experiences that children have with language and language development and the communication they have with their caregivers. We know that by age three, if students are behind in their language development, their vocabulary development, and their uh, life experiences, they will be at risk for reading problems later on because reading is very dependent on language proficiency. Grandma, Grandma, gra gra Grandpa. There's probably no one precursor that is more important to a child than to realize the sounds of their language. Those sounds come from the earliest exposure to the mother and the father's voice. Those sounds come through the supper table. Those sounds come from people. And those sounds come in special ways from book and story and fairy tale. They're learning all that. And as they learn that their words have only these sounds, by the time they are 12 months old, they have a repertoire of only the sounds in their language and they know them. The language stimulation that we hope children will be exposed to begins as soon as they're born. It's never too soon for parents to begin to read to their children and many parents need to know that there are uh, several months before children even try to speak or learn to speak when their brains are developing extremely rapidly and laying down all those networks and foundations for the language system that is going to uh, blossom um, between uh, the first year and the third year. The rate of vocabulary acquisition for, for young kids is as fast as it will ever be between the ages of one and three. Over the last 25, 30 years, we have had a, a, a spate of research that has pointed out that to learn anything, it's built on prior knowledge. And so we've started looking at each stage of development, each stage of learning, what did you need to know in order to learn that. And that is how we have come to this understanding that learning to read didn't just start at kindergarten age where you learn the alphabet. Learning to read started with your knowledge of literacy. Did you know what a book is? Do you know how books came into being? Did you know that there's print in a book? All of those are things that happened before you went to school, but we never thought about them very much. And then when we learn, well, it's not only about books, it's about language. 
Well, when did they learn language? Well, that started all the way when you were eight or nine months old, when you were babbling and learned the difference between babbling and words. Well, how about babbling? Well, that started when you were three or four months old. So we have gradually come to understand how each of these edifices of learning is built on something else. And so you need to go back and make sure that every stage the child has learned what he needs to know in order to make to the next stage. Language is a game. It's also, to me, the most serious play there is that's possible for our, our early childhood educators. And to make language games at every opportunity. Have fun. The most serious courtship in the world should be the gift of our early childhood educators to children who are not getting it in their home and seize every opportunity to enrich those concepts. We need to understand early childhood is the preparation for reading. Early childhood's emphasis on concepts, the cognitive and linguistic aspects of reading, is such an important, an important contribution. But there's also another one. That's the affective one. There's nothing like feeling that everybody else knows all these words and what to do with them, and you don't. Our children who hear 40 plus million instances of words, they can play with words. They know a great deal more than just what the word means. They know how it's used, how it's used in different contexts. They can have fun with it. And then when they learn to read, they can run with it. Not so with our children who have different courtship, different feelings about language. Affect is really an important aspect. When a child thinks that they're a failure at five and six, by eight, they usually are. So we really have a lot of catching up to do if they come in feeling like that. We have a harder job, but can we do it? Yes, absolutely. Thank you.